Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to look at the new Persian replacement for the Paladin, called the Savar, which from now on is going to be their upgrade for the Cavalier at the Stable. Interestingly, its in-game description side by side with the Paladin no longer highlights a particular strength against infantry, in favor of just saying they're good against archers, while the patch notes also emphasize it excels against archers specifically. Remember, Persian Paladins though already had plus two against archers from a team bonus, so the question is then how they compare to what Persians had before in their Paladins, and that's the main thing we'll be looking into. Starting off compared with a generic Paladin, it looks like you're trading 15 HP for a bit of extra armor. I initially just wrote this off as being roughly equivalent units, but as you look deeper, more differences pop up. One advantage the Savar seems to have is in its upgrade cost, which is significantly cheaper, making it, especially in 1v1s, easier to justify, but also easier to tech into for team games, helped out even more by the fact it's a 20 second faster upgrade to research. Another hidden benefit for the Savar is it has plus three bonus damage against archers. Again, I initially wrote this off as being not a big deal, as the Nightline already had plus two for Persians, and I assume this was to offset that. But in reality, the team bonus still applies to Savars as well, meaning instead of plus two or plus three, they have plus five against archers. We'll dig into how they compare to Paladins in some practical situations in a moment, but just to answer a comment I've gotten a few times, while yes, they're unique and highlighted in purple in the tech tree, they do not count as a unique unit for samurai bonus damage purposes. This is the same with Imperial Camels and Imperial Skirmishers, etc., as the devs generally don't want to disincentivize players from fully upgrading generic unit lines against Japanese and getting hit with surprise samurai bonus damage. It's only standalone units like Konotieri, Warrior Priests, or Castle unique units that take that bonus. Also, a quick note is remember Persian Savars generate gold for each unit they defeat. Getting back to that comparison, starting off head to head, it turns out Savars and generic Paladins each take 14 attacks to defeat the other, but secretly the Savar actually attacks slightly faster. Normally, the Paladin upgrade over Cavalier comes with a small nerf to its attack speed, but the Savar doesn't have that feature, so it barely ekes them out every time. Persians have always been a good cavalry sieve, so beating generic Paladins with their own is still on brand, but notice everything we've seen so far, whether it's upgrade cost and time, bonus damage, or attack speed, is just ever so slightly going in favor of the Savar. It turns out they do lag very good Paladin sieves though, and for example, Franks, Teutons, and Lithuanians with three or more relics still beat them head to head, either through surviving an extra attack or defeating them one attack sooner. To me, this implies they're not unprecedented in strength against top tier paladins, at least in melee. In fact, in many cases, it's going to turn out that trading 15 HP for one melee armor does not put them in a better position in melee. Against halberdiers, for example, we have here a generic paladin, Savar, and Franks, representing a well established top tier paladin. The Frank paladin, in fact, takes one more attack than the others, clearly holding up the best, while the Savar appears completely generic. That's slightly misleading though, as the generic Paladin is very close to actually surviving six attacks as well. If we have a Halberdier missing the last attack upgrade, Byzantines as an example, Savars take one fewer hit than they would if they had Paladin. Suddenly, you can see why maybe they took the infantry specialty out of the description, as in most cases, losing 15 HP is more significant than plus one melee armor. Another common example you might run into is against pikemen, say against Saracens, where again Savars take 7 instead of the 8 hits for the other 2. In a large scale fight outnumbered 2 to 1, this is a situation where generic or frank paladins typically win, whereas Savars reliably lose. I won't go through every melee unit, but it's similar against heavy camels, where technically all 3 cavalry here take 8 attacks, but the Savar is perilously close to falling into taking one fewer attack than the others, if you've say forgotten an armor upgrade for example. In practice, units fight with mismatched upgrades all the time, or go into fights having already taken 5 or 10 damage, so just looking at how many hits a unit takes from full health can hide the Savar's disadvantage here. The main takeaway is in melee they beat Paladins head to head because of faster attack, so they look good in that specific comparison, but more generally against melee units, they're roughly on par with regular Paladins, maybe even a little worse against some of their counters, but still reasonably cost effective against say generic infantry, where any disadvantage they have is pretty subtle. So far so good though, as remember they have a cheaper upgrade cost, generate gold, and slightly edge out generic Paladins while being a bit worse against what are probably their most common counters, which seems like a fair trade. Of course, their supposed specialty is against archers, so now let's take a look at how everything compares in that situation. 
First off, from enemy skirmishers, you'll have 7 attack, with a generic paladin having 7 armor, and a Savar having 8, there's no extra points here for over negating enemy damage. So everyone takes the minimum, meaning Savars are actually the worst one here, with the lowest HP. On the flip side, this is when their attack bonus comes in, and with all upgrades, their plus 5 bonus means they take out elite skirmishers in just 2 attacks, unlike 3 for other paladins, or 3 for the Persian paladins before this update. We are assuming here that the Savar is fully upgraded, but we start to cross the line here into territory where maybe they really are a significant upgrade against archers. To follow up on that, against Arbalesters, something interesting happens. Suddenly, instead of 3 damage per attack, Savar's extra 1 pierce armor lets them take just 2. Even with lower HP, that means they take over a third more arrows than a generic paladin, and nearly a third more than Frank paladins with their 192 HP. Plus 1 pierce armor might sound pretty small, but on the margins like this, it can be a pretty big swing percentage wise. Maybe just as important is again the plus 5 bonus damage means Savars can defeat Arbalesters in 2 attacks. That's a pretty potent combo of offensive and defensive advantages. To get a sense of how this might play out, with 15 paladins surrounding 40 stationary Arbalesters, top tier Frank paladins end with a little over half their HP left. That's a very good trade, but doing the same fight with Savars leads to over 3 quarters of their strength remaining for Persians. Remember, Persians also get 200 free gold from this battle, which is in fact more than enough to replace the 2 of the starting 15 units lost. With a quick heal afterwards and putting that gold to use, Persians could end up with a larger army than they started with, which is some pretty crazy value. Obviously, if the Arblesters had micro, they would perform better, and it's more the comparison to the Franks that I'm trying to highlight here. Now, we don't have to go through every archer variation, but it's not really uncommon to have Savars beat similar archer unique units when attack faster, though you can find other cases where they end up the same as paladins. It all depends on the particular unit, but even if they don't get taken out one attack sooner, you still have the extra armor and gold generation, on top of a cheaper upgrade to begin with. Technically, the largest difference in their armor occurs against anything with 9 attack, hitting a critical threshold where they take 1 damage instead of the usual 2. A town center is an example of this, and while town centers are bad against paladins either way, Savars in your base with just town centers to fight them off is kind of GG. Even a group of 4 can bring down a fully garrisoned town center, losing just 2 of their 4 units, while a similar group of 4 Frankish paladins can be fought off. To the degree that Savars deserve to have their strength against melee units de-emphasized, I think it's worth highlighting how much better they are at raiding, and even their faster attack can mean picking off a villager that was just about to escape. On the flip side, against things with very high pierce attack, the plus 1 armor naturally ends up meaning a little less. Against castles, for example, they take the same number of shots as any paladin, and against things like hand cannoneers, that plus 1 pierce armor just doesn't have a lot of impact. They still have an attack bonus against those high damage sorts of archers, but their defensive advantages at least start to disappear. For the most part, the sweet spot is against ranged units with 9 to 12 attack, which actually covers most archers and cavalry archer variants. Combined with the anti-archer bonus also applying to cavalry archers, this means Persians are going to be tricky for Mongols, Magyars, or Tatars, etc. to handle in the late game. Keep in mind, Persians can also combine their Savars with complementary goldless crossbows, fully upgraded hand cannoneers, or decent cavalry archers of their own, so even their slightly greater weakness to pikes can be offset with other support units, while giving you one of the better anti-archer units in the game, period. Overall, combined with the return of their plus 5% Dark Age Town Center bonus, gold generation, and cheaper upgrade, Persians making Savar in both 1v1 and team games seems like a very powerful option. It's not just archer sieves that need to be careful either, as we saw their raiding potential is also quite good, plus they beat all but the best paladins one on one. There's no question for me this is an upgrade over Persian paladins of the past, and upon closer inspection seem quite a bit better than I gave them credit for initially looking at their swap of HP for armor. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.